Whew. All right. Looks like we're live. Just have to get a few things set up because <clears throat> that's kind of how it always goes, right? Just trying to get everything finished up here. It looks like it's working though. Last time I did a live or attempted to do a live, it did not work at all. It was a uh, kind of a disastrous mess, but here we are today. And it seems like it seems like it's working. <laughs> so hopefully we'll have um, people jump in here really soon so we can start chatting. So if you're here, jump in and say hi. And let me know what you're working on today. Let's see. Hello, Mayor. How are you? Thank you for chiming in today. What you're working on? Real quick, I'm going to put this over on Facebook, hopefully. <laughs> All right, live chat going on right now. All right. Hi, hello, Amber. Thanks for hopping on. And Roseanne. Amber says she's working on a play hamburger set. Ooh, that'll be fun. Hello, Kim's Crafty Corner. Mare's working on a knit hat and a crochet baby duck hat. Oh, I bet that's cute. Hello, cool, the cool kid. Hello, Bridget. Thank you for hopping in. And Carolyn, thank you for being here. So, oh, hello, Nani. One of my um, favorite things, ooh, more people are hopping in. Hello, Tammy and Karen and Rachel. Kim says she's working on a baby blanket that she's pro procrastinated for months. I understand that. Ooh, and there will be duck feet baby booties to go with Mare's duck hat. I'll be so cute. Oh, thank you, Bridget. Have a good night. <laughs> I appreciate you hopping in. So one of my favorite things that... Um, Jasmine Starr does, which she's a photographer turned business strategist. Um, she asks people like, like, tell me something good. You know, she's really good at like bringing, bringing in positivity and optimism. And I thought that's a great way to like start a live chat, you know, not just to ask like, what are you guys working on? But also ask like, is there any, like, is there something you're celebrating? Are you like excited about anything in particular? I'd love to know, like, the good things that are happening in your life right now. You know, like, tell me something good. So I'll let you guys go ahead and I can share or vice versa. All right, Les Leslie Meany is working on a, a rug. Nice. Tammy's almost out of the chubby panda. Hello, Mark. Thank you all for hopping on. So um, I guess one of the things that has been... I guess my my tell me something good. Um, I mentioned Jasmine Sir, just you know here a second ago. Um, she, like I said, she's a business strategist and she's been doing um, a free class on Creative Live to, uh, the, yesterday and today, and then there's one more class tomorrow. And I've been learning a lot, and it's just been like really great. And also, like, kind of exhausting when you take in a lot of information. So, like, I'm kind of tired, but it's also been really wonderful. So that's been my, like, yeah, learning stuff, growing, doing good stuff. Because that's, that's how I feel when 
but I'm making progress. It's just like, yes. So it's been good. All right, Mayor, Mayor's Runaway Hook says, I have a job interview next week. Ooh, that's exciting. Good luck. Elizabeth Hernandez says, she did the panda today. Very nice. Oh, Rachel, I did see, I did see your um, fluffy yarn elephants in Instagram, I think earlier today or yesterday, something like that. Oh, and Leslie says she's getting driving privileges just two weeks after total knee replacement. Wow, that's impressive healing. Way to go. That is awesome. Hello, Kathy. Hello. J baby <laughs> and baby baby K crochet hello thank you Mark for loving the owl that is yeah something I'm what I was going to talk about next is kind of the the new and exciting uh segment of our show so new and exciting I'm I have made progress on the great horned owl it is not done yet but this is where we are at the moment um so it's been it's been going pretty well like I like I am pretty pleased with it I am just struggling a little bit on the feet and the horns so if you can kind of see maybe I can put it up a little bit more it's going to be out of focus but you can see right there in the background I'll just go get it going to be way easier. <laughs> Sorry about that. All right. Here we go. All right. Now I've got to put this back down so you guys can see what's going on here. All right. So this one was the original from uh, the end of 2016 I think like this one's pretty old and like I think it's got this it's not this side no it's this side oh no it's the back he's got a great big hole in the back of his neck because when Rachel was little she got her fingers twisted in and I had to cut her free which is why you don't do things with an extremely loose gauge <laughs> I learned um Let's see, checking in on the comments really quick. I'll get back to those later. So this is, you know, these are the differences. So this one, the head is more stable. I've learned some things since then. It's, um, you know, also a tighter gauge. And I decided to do the eye surrounds on this one with just a, a worsted weight. Um, and then I did double crochets. Whereas this one, I used the, you know, the Bernat blanket single crochet. Um, and so I, I just think this one is looking a little more put together. Um, and so what I'm trying to figure out is like on this one, the original, <laughs> sorry, this is what the whole show today is going to be. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. <laughs> on, on the original, I did the, the horns, we'll call them, and the feet in the burnout blanket yarn. And um, I was my first attempt at this one, I was thinking I would switch to um, the worsted weight for the feet, and I haven't gotten very far on the horn. I've gotten this far. Um, hold it over this way. And, and then I was like, I don't know, like maybe that's too, maybe that's too much of the, the smaller size. And so I went ahead and I made a big, you know, a big foot using the, the um, blanket yarn. And because it works up so much faster, I was also able to like get started on at least the first idea kind of of the horn, which has a really long yarn tail to kind of hold it on. So if that makes any sense visually, that yarn coming down is super distracting. So, so I was going for like something like this. Um, 
but I, I just, I'm just not sure. I haven't quite decided whether I want to go, you know, the burnout blanket yarn for the feet and the horn or whether I should go worsted weight yarn. So I'm going to probably be, you know, thinking about that for a while. So let's see. Oh yes, I should do that. Uh, let's see. Thank you. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Um, Mayor, do we have? I haven't been looking. Do we have um trolls in here? Probably we do. Does anyone want, who wants to be a moderator? You can um chime in. I guess save us from people who are just being silly. Um, baby cake. K Crochet says the eyes are so cute. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. Kimber Ann. Ooh, I like that name, Kimber Ann. Um, Rachel asks, when will I release the hippo? First, I have to get it tested, which I am working on the pattern, um, getting it typed up. So hopefully in the next week or two, I'll be sending that to testers. So let's Crystal says, love the owl. I made a snowy owl, so I'm excited to make this one. Thank you. Mara also says, better definition with the worsted. That is true. It does give better definition. And so part of what I, like why I'm questioning it, it is because, um, I don't know, like do I, do I want better definition on this one or do I want it to just kind of be soft and less defined? I don't know. Lots of things going on in my head. We will just see. So that's kind of where that is. Um, Kim's Crafty Corner. I will definitely make you a moderator. Oof, thought I was going to lose there for a second. Thank you so much for doing that. I appreciate it. And ooh, our crochet, Amber, I will have you do it as well. So we have people. Thank you. Thank you for doing that. Um... See, Rachel asks, <laughs> any more whips besides the owl and the fox? Um, so those are the main ones. I do have one other one, which I have not touched in a while, which I need to work on, which I'll, I might pull that out in a second. So yeah, this was the other, other whip, <laughs> uh, was the fox. Last, last crochet chat yeah last live chat I had this one um, but I didn't have the eyes on or the nose on yet and I honestly like this ear which doesn't look fantastic took me forever like I think I watched two episodes of murder she wrote just trying to figure it out because I mean what what the issue was is um you know in the in the body, you use the red burnout, you use the white burnout, you use the black burnout. And I want to try and keep the, you know, the pattern as simple as possible. And so I thought, well, perfect. The ear needs to be white, black, and red. I'll just make it all out of burnout blanket yarn. Um, and it was getting so like fat, it didn't work at all. And the shape was wrong. And I like, I, I can't achieve the definition that I needed to for um, something that is this, small, you know, like that would work if I was making a fox that was this size, but I'm not making a fox that is this size. So, um, yeah, it's taken me a lot of, a lot of tries, but I think I'm finally, you know, pretty happy with it. Um, and so I just have to make another one. And like, like I said, this one's a rough draft, the heads, all sorts of ski wampus. This is not going to be the finished product. Um, but you know, Rough drafts are not perfect. <laughs> so that's uh, that's where this one is. Mm -hmm. Going to continue to work on it um, a little bit and then I'll work on make like making a better version of the chubby fox. So let's see. What we've got going on. Um, let's see. 
Amber suggests the horn should be in the softer yarn. I could see that. Um, and then Mare says with the, it will stand better with worsted feet. And I do, yeah, that would make sense as well. So I have, I have thought about that where I thought like maybe I should do one soft and then one hard, but then I have to, well, I guess I don't have to, but in my stash, my, um, my worsted weight yarn and my blanket yarn are very similar color. So like, I think that would work for me. Um, but I would feel bad trying to, I don't know if, if people couldn't find ones that matched really well. Um, I could see how that could be kind of a bother. Um, so that was the reason why I wanted to maybe keep the, the horn, the horns and the feet out of the same material. So that's kind of, kind of where I am on that. I'm seeing a lot of a lot of people saying, yeah, do the horn soft and the feet hard. So I don't know, like maybe it's not that big of a deal to have those two yarns and try and find a similar color or people can go with two different colors if they want to. I mean, that's completely up to them. I like the consistency of the look because like on, um, on the great horned owl, Oh, I was wrong. They don't use almond in this, but the like the the colors work really well with the this blanket yarn is called Little Sandcastles, and the almond color goes really well with it. Um, and and so I I like having the top and the bottom, you know the the feet and the horns being the same color because I think it, it brings a consistent look through the whole thing. And it's kind of hard to tell, but like on the eyes, I went with a cream for the eye surround to bring out that same color of the cream that is used. Oh, it's not cream, it's vintage white um, in in the little sand castles colorway. You know, so I'm trying to keep um, a nice consistent look throughout. Um, Yeah, so that's kind of my thought on that. Anyhow, it looks like we've had a couple of other people jump in, jump in here. Hello, Crystal. <laughs> so, that's pretty entertaining. Let's see. Thank you, Joe, <laughs> for saying the chubby fox is so cute. I, I'm really hoping that the next iteration is cuter. It's, uh, I don't know, this one right now honestly kind of bugs me because because I don't think it's that cute. There is, there's a lot of potential and I got some really great comments, I think last live, on like using the shape of it for like an alligator. And I was like, that'd be perfect. That'd be so perfect, you know, because the kind of the upward um, shape is really good and then the length of it. You know, there would definitely be some some differences to it, but I thought that was a great idea. Let's see. Rachel says, what's the whip that you haven't touched? My curiosity is killing me. Okay, I'll go find it. Let's see. Um, I recently rearranged the way that I store my yarn. Um, I used to put them all in bins by project, and I had... I didn't have enough projects going on, so I tried to like rearrange them by color. So now I just have to see if I can, you know, find what it is I was working on. Okay, yeah. I have gotten this. So I have not touched this in probably like two whole months, which is kind of embarrassing. But this is the beginning of the Hippo Lovey. Um, the hippo is right there, horribly out of focus. Um, I haven't, the reason why I haven't worked on it is because I, um, I, I got the suggestion from someone to be able to make the blankets removable. Um, and so then I didn't want to make this one with a blanket that was non-removable if I was going to, you know, be trying to incorporate that. Um, and then I got some really great suggestions from you guys on that, um, using different sorts of snaps to, to make it work. 
And then I washed the, the panda, which you guys can't see, he's off camera. And I realized like, you can just probably throw this in the washer. Like, well, probably you'd still want to like spot wash rather than, or like hand wash everything. Um, but I think that's just fine. And so I don't know that the blanket needs to be removable from the toy. Uh, Cause that was what the person was specifying saying, you know, like I'd like to be able to remove the blanket from the toy so I can just wash the blanket, but probably they both need to be washed. So I haven't quite decided whether I am going to try and, um, you know, make the hippo lovey with a snap attachment so it is removable or whether I'm just going to go with the doll joints that I have been using and, and move forward from there. So, yeah, I need to, like I said earlier, um, Rachel, I'm going to be getting the hippo to testers probably in the next week or two, which means I need to get the hippo lovey done as well so I can um, get that to you guys, um, to those who are testing. So, you know, I've got a lot to do. Let's see. Thank you, Erica. Oh, <laughs> Mark Williams says, my name is Sarah. I didn't know I was on my husband's YouTube. Well, hi, Sarah. <laughs> I will do my best to not refer to you as Mark. That's awesome. Let's see. Oh, Joe's Webb says, now I know what to make with the, the green yarn, the alligator. That's so true. Oh gosh, that would be so cute. I just just got that green yarn. It would be super, super cute with an alligator. Erica says she's liking the red fox. Thank you, Erica. Let's see. Um, Amber Ua Crochet says Burnett Blanket definitely can be washed. They make water balloons of them, so why not just wash it all? Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm leaning toward a little bit is just you know, keeping it uh, all one piece so it can just be thrown in the wash. Well, I still would recommend hand washing, then throw it in the dryer, but that's just me. Rachel asks, can you bring over the hippo so I can screenshot it and send it to my friend who has hippo says? <laughs> sure. Let's see. <laughs> yeah. Here it is. I'll move my face to the side so it's not. It is a pretty cute hippo, isn't it? Sometimes I get distracted and I just, I don't know. It's almost like I forget about projects and then I come back and I'm like, I do like that one. It is cute, huh? So I will hold it still at an angle. Okay, you got it. Nice. <laughs> Let's see, do, 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 do. where was I? All right, Kim's Crafty Corner says, I've made a couple lovies and they've gone through the wash a few times and it worked great. Okay, nice, that's good to know. Nani says, love the fox, also wondering if slash when you'll release the other hedgehog pattern. So um, are you referring to the, the one that's like kind of the porcupine hedgehog hybrid? Where is that one? It's right here. It fell down. It kind of looks like my brother right now. Okay, that, you guys don't know my brother. So that will sound like a really weird comment. My brother has really super curly thick hair and sometimes he lets it grow long and wild, kind of like that. So it's like, oh, it looks like Michael. I'll comb it back so it won't look like Michael. There we go. Yeah, is this the one that you're talking about? Um, because I am not sure on this one. I, I I feel a little bit bad because I come to you guys and I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know if I'm going to do this. I don't know if I'm going to do this. I don't know. Um, but I guess that's just part of it being a, a vlog channel. Because <laughs> so much of it truly is I'm like, I'm not sure yet. I haven't yet decided. Or, you know, like I'm, I'm still deliberating. So I do think my plan for this one is to make a porcupine out of it, you know, out of the idea. We're going to add a tail. We're going to make it bigger. 
um, and do a little, something a little bit different with the face so that it is porcupine. And then um, I will probably make a chubby hedgehog that is like this, you know, the, um, the loops will be a lot smaller. The, um, I'm going to take the body down a little bit. I think I went like 36 stitches around. We're going to keep it 30 max. And, um, and I'll probably take out two to three rows in the center. So, so I essentially I'm going to take this and I'm going to like split it into two and make two different things. So that is, that is that. <laughs> I'm glad you think it's cute. Um, hello, Bella. Thank you for hopping in tonight. Uh, troll whackin happy hookin mama Diana Griffiths says, do you have a squirrel? I do not yet. Um, that is on the master list of things to crochet. Um, Erica says, hello, is the bobble hedgehog, bobble stitch pad, hedgehog pattern ready? Almost. Yes, kind of. Let me tell you one second. So it is going to be released July 1st. So for, um, if you guys follow me on Instagram and or Facebook, I'm actually, I put out a video today um, announcing that I'm going to officially release the, um, the hedgehog pattern July 1st. And if you guys would like to enter to win it before you can buy it, um, you can go to my either my Instagram or my Facebook. I'm actually going to do two different ones. Um, so you can enter both to up your chances of, of winning uh, the free pattern. Um, and so that will be 20, or, you know, the person who wins on both of those will be selected on the 29th. And then it will go up for sale officially on the 1st um, of July. Excuse me. And I also plan probably on doing something special for the people on my, um, what is it called? On my mailing list. I know words. Um, so if you want to catch all of the deals, be on my mailing list. Yep, so that is the plan. Oh, I, Erica, I didn't realize you don't use Facebook or Instagram. That's too bad. Um, but maybe anyone else who's um, in that could, uh, could do that. Let's see. Hello, Adele. Thanks for hopping on. Let's see. Rachel says, I was in a block for three days until I thought of the fox backpack. Oh yeah, I did I did see that too. That's I love creative ideas. That's so fun. <clears throat> Zella says, I can't believe July 1st is Monday. Wasn't Christmas just last week? Oh my gosh, yeah. I feel like we're, you know, maybe two weeks into 2019 and we're like Christmas in July starts July 1st. Goodness gracious. So let's talk about that for a second. I don't have the one that I made for that up, but I'll get the other one. Um, <laughs> lives just turn into like show and tell. I hope that's okay. <laughs> So for Christmas in July, we are going to be making the, the baby sheep pattern. And so um, I've been working on things behind the scenes. It's been going well. Um, and my thinking is I'm, oh shoot, do you know what I was gonna do? Ah, I'm a horrible person. I told someone in a comment today that I was going to have the materials list up so I could link it below this video and you guys could work on getting 
the materials for the Christmas in July crocheting along. And I got started and I didn't get finished. So I'm really sorry about that. I will, I will get that up. It will be after this video, but I will link it. Um, so I'm going to have the materials list. Um, I also have a, a set, I'm going to have a video just on materials and it will go up July 1st as well. So there will be the materials video, there will be a materials PDF. Um, so there are multiple ways to get the materials. And then I think what we're going to do is um, like every Monday and Wednesday, I'm going to post a video um, for the crochet along. That way um, people have, I think there are five videos. So that will get us done in, you know, and we'll have like almost two full weeks left of July. So people can, um, so people can finish it up. Um, Cause I want to actually do a giveaway with this one. I've never done that before. Um, but I, but I want to, I want to try doing a giveaway because it would, I don't know, I think it'd be fun. So anyway, that's, uh, that's kind of where the baby sheep is. So coming over here to read the comments. Amber's birthday from Ua Crochet is in July. She's turning 40. Congratulations, Amber. I've decided to think about it as levels. You guys have probably heard that before, but it's like I'm on level 40, you know. That just sounds like so experienced and intelligent, doesn't it? <laughs> Everyone seems to be agreeing that 40 is really young, so that's wonderful. <laughs> Let's see. Kim's Crafted Corner says, I want to see what the baby sheep looks like in one strand of worsted. I'm curious now. I might have to do that this week. I have a coral baby sheep to assemble and a purple shelly sheep I'm making. Ooh, that's cool. Hi, Denisha. Thanks for hopping on. Let's see. Ooh, ah, crochet <laughs> says, you are such a gamer. Uh, not really, kind of a little bit not I'm not really a gamer like I've played maybe two games but my my husband is definitely a gamer and so we talk about games a lot like like he's not he's not just like someone who sits and plays video games a lot he like thinks about the storyline and like he gets really 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 into it and so we have pretty in-depth discussions about games so I know quite a few things but I like can't play them to save my life I'm pretty pathetic so yeah <laughs> Joe's love says I love that I'm on level 50 yeah I mean oh and Zella's on level 52 nice <laughs> yes, it is rub rubbing off on me. Um, Rachel says she plays some games. She loves Mappy. Nice. Like I like I really I grew up in a family where we I'm trying to think like playing a game on the computer in uh, my world was either using paint or playing solitaire. Um. And we didn't have a TV. And so, like, I'm, I'm really not game or movie savvy. So that's, that's just it. <laughs> Nani says, I'm a noob, level 24. <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm not. I'm level 27. Um, but, yeah, still kind of a noob. It's true. So yeah, Mare says Joe is extra wise. Oh, she says that makes us extra wise. Nice. Oh, Erica's saying that her yarn order did not go through. Oh no. So I might always have to use the worsted weight yarn. Okay. I've been thinking about this. Um, 
that I need to do. And I got the suggestion from, I think her name was Eileen or Eileen. She emailed me. I was like, you know, just as a suggestion, you should make options for people to make the patterns without the fleece. So everything can be scaled. I was like, yeah, that's a good idea. I really like using the fleece, but uh, it's probably wise to have that as a, as an option. So my thought was that I, I'm going to work on it slowly. Um, um, creating like options where if you buy the pattern, you can go to my blog and, and you could read how you'd need to just do things differently if you wanted to just use yarn instead of using fleece as well. Um, so that's, that's the one thought. Because then, you know, like Erica is saying, she can't get the burnout blanket yarn. Um, you could use worsted weight and everything should scale just fine. Uh, all right, Amber, take care. So the kids are rebelling and Dawn is at a meeting. I understand. Thanks for hopping on. I really appreciate it. All right. Let's see. Oh, Deborah's on level 60. Way to go, Deborah. She's been playing the game for a while. Impressive. <clears throat> uh, and Kim's Crafty Corner says three stands of worsted scales almost perfectly to Bernat. I yeah, I totally agree with that. Actually, on on the Chubby Fox, I don't know if you can even really tell the difference, but this right here is um is three stands uh, strands of worsted because I ran out. I had like like one triple crochet left of the bobble to do, and I ran out. And I was like, Are you kidding me? <laughs> So yeah, so three does work. I, I have noticed like the nice thing about Bernat is that it is kind of so soft and plush and three strands of worsted is not. Um, but you, you are going to have essentially the correct scale if you use that. So Deborah says, thanks, I think. <laughs> yes, I think that's a good thing. I mean, when you think about life in terms of levels, like, it just sounds like you're intense and awesome. That's that's not, I think. Mare says she's awesome that she's a level 40 in Pokemon Go and no one expects it. Nice. <laughs> that is impressive. Zella asks, what is the best place to get polyfill? Um in my opinion or my experience so far. I have gotten the best deals at just at Walmart. You can buy a pretty, pretty big. I think I've got a full one. I can try and get it out. You can buy, um, it's upside down. <laughs> you can buy this, which is 50 ounces for, uh, for $10 at Walmart. Um, so in my experience, that's the best, the best deal. Rachel asks, what's your advice on selling your items at craft events? So I've never done a craft event, so I really don't have any suggestions on that. That was something that when I, um, when I spoke to Kim at the Blue Cherub, she had some some good suggestions because she's done that a couple of times, but I never have. So I was gleaning a little bit from her. Um, yeah, I don't know if you guys have any suggestions for uh, for Rachel on selling at craft fairs. We we I mean we can all learn from each other's wisdom. So go ahead and comment and, and let us know because I. Like I said, I really don't have an idea. I've never done it. All right. Let's see. So I wanted to 
ask a question. We've got 20 minutes left of our life. If my throat holds out, it's kind of sore actually. Um, <clears throat> so the question I wanna ask you guys um, is what you guys, just thoughts. Clearly I'm just like gleaning and you know, ask, asking for opinions, asking for thoughts. I think every life so far I've brought up the idea of uh, the like subscription site for um, and most recently I started talking about maybe just doing it for the chubby series keeping everything else that I've done so far the same you know releasing my normal patterns you know when they would come out like once a month or something like that and I'm just keeping that standard but then maybe taking the um, the chubby patterns and doing them exclusive um, so they wouldn't ever like they'd be a digital exclusive for those who were on the subscription and um, at the end of the year I would compile them all and I would make um, an ebook and the ebook would be on sale on my site but they wouldn't be sold individually um, so that was that was kind of my idea um, and so that was that was kind of what I brought up last week and since then I've been pondering and just trying to you know figure out maybe how some of the other things would work and um and, and I was curious this is this is the question all of that lead up to this question um do you guys think I should keep like I should do a separate chubby if vlog if I go ahead and do that and I have a subscription site for the chubby series everything else would stay the same over here undefiled all the same but but should i have um like a separate vlog for the chubby animals just wondering because um i would i don't know it, it feels a little weird to me even as I'm saying it right now, it's like, actually, that's probably not that big of a deal. But it felt a little bit weird to be like, hi, this is something I'm making. You can only get it here. But I guess that's kind of how it is with everything. It's like, hi, this is something I'm making. You can buy it on my shop or you can join the subscription site. So maybe that's not a big deal. Maybe I can just keep the, keep, um, all of my things in the vlog together. That'd probably be okay. Thank you for letting me think about that <laughs> while I talk to you guys. Has anyone else noticed that? That like I um well like this is how I think, but I, I think other people do as well. That like as you talk, you think through it and and vocalizing and like hearing it with your ears instead of just hearing it inside your head you're like oh i get it now <laughs> that makes sense whereas before you didn't so this is why we talk to ourselves so we can understand um you know what's going on in our head let's see Amber says, um, that's how you promote yourself. With um, Randy and Kendra do that with their Patreon. That's very true. That's very true. Erica says she's up for a subscription. Uh, but to keep the chubby animals open to all, you might lose out. Hmm. Interesting. I'll think about that. Kim says, make sure you're not selling yourself short. That will discourage you from selling. Oh, I think that's that's a comment to Rachel. Oh, and Rachel's next question is one more question. Where do you find the dowel for the ride along Unicorn? Um, I just got mine at Home Depot. Three quarter inch dowel, pretty, pretty simple. J baby, J baby 0208 says, I think you can keep it in the vlogs. People may well then be interested in subscribing to learn more. Okay, yeah, I, I agree. I think that makes sense. I think that makes sense. There is value in talking. 
<laughs> talking through things it helps you a little bit hi judy thanks for hopping on she says she's working on dish clocks nice very good um erica is suggesting for the subscription do special things like discounts crochet along etc yes very nice yeah so in in my kind of thinking about things i think i made a list that probably with the subscription site it would all be digital um, for the next while um, but it would be like a each month there'd be a, a pattern a tutorial um, a private facebook group with bi-monthly live chats and um i might put the because I, I talked one time about doing like a pattern design series you know just doing like a compilation on kind of how I, I work through an entire pattern like maybe keep that on there and have that be like an exclusive thing there um and then um maybe treat each month like a mini crochet along for those who are subscribed and do like a little giveaway each month for those who make the pattern and post their finished object. That was, that was kind of my thought. I would <clears throat> honestly, like I get really excited about the, um, about the idea to, um, to have, a place where I can go deeper with people. Like I just think it, it could be really fun, you know, to have a group that that feels really close knit and is, um, you know, I can, I don't know, chat with more, maybe do more exciting things with. I don't know. I think it sounds like that. Let's see. What are we doing in the comments? <laughs> well, thank you, Tammy. Tammy DeCat, that is an adorable name. I like that. She says, oh, my excitement is getting off the chain for the subscription. The Chevy series is my favorite. And Adele it comments back to one of Erica's posts. She says, um, Erica's saying, generally keep your patterns available to all. Someone might want one pattern only, which is true. But I don't know. I don't know. Because I, like, one of, I guess, the, the inner working, sorry, I'm like just pausing here thinking, inner workings in my head. My, my patterns are maybe a smidge more expensive than a lot of other people's patterns um which i feel honestly really good about i i think i i work really hard and i think i do good work and i try really hard to keep you know to keep my patterns up to date and people um so they can work and make my patterns like i, I feel pretty good about the effort and the price that i put into them um I just don't know how I would price the chubby animals because they're different. They take less time, they take less resources, they take less time for testers to work through. Um, but I, I want I want my patterns to be something that if you were to buy it one off, it feels pretty good. Um, but at the same time, if it goes on sale, you're like, yeah, I got a deal, you know? So like. For my bigger patterns or the the pattern bundles with you know like the the baby pattern and the lovey that goes with it they're seven dollars and so when you get it on sale you're like yeah 350 you know it's like it's really exciting whereas if i were to like sell um the chubby patterns for you know for like two dollars it's like one dollar on sale that's not very exciting you know or like you know, like, like there, there is something about pricing in there. And like, I feel a little bit the same way with like, if it was $3, like $1.50, that's better, but it's still, it's not, I don't know. 
I, I like to have things be exciting, if that makes any sense. Um, so, so why I've been thinking maybe I wouldn't have the chubby patterns be sold by themselves is partly that. And then also like, I really like the idea of having, um, of, of being able to put out a book, an entire book that people, like most people can just buy it and, and not, not feel like, oh, well, I already got these three, so I don't want to, you know, buy the book for the other, you know, seven or 10 that are in there because I've already got these ones. And like, I, maybe it gets a little discombobulating. I'm not sure. There's a lot that is still going on in my head. So that's that. Um, let's see. I was chatting for so long I missed quite a few comments. I'm going to scroll back up here. Um, Tammy says, that's a lot to do for a subscription club if you're planning on doing general patterns as well. Um, be careful that you don't overextend yourself and burn out. That is true. That is true. Um, that is true. <laughs> I'll say that again. Um, my thoughts on, on burnout, absolutely a possibility. Um, and I don't want to go there. I, I do want to like take care of myself and take care of, of uh, my work as well. And to be able to live, deliver things that are consistent and good. Um, but most of the time I don't, I don't fear it too much because I get so excited about projects that I actually make them really fast. And then what I, the hard part is actually getting them typed up. Um, so, I mean, in, uh, in response to that, Tammy, um, I don't know that like next year, this year I've gone a little crazy. Um, like my goal was to do eight patterns, I think for the year. And I think I've put out 13 already. So like this year I've gone a little ridiculous and probably I should pace my, like I'm, I, my goal next year actually is to put out like at the most once a month for like the general patterns and to just keep it like spaced out and even and not be insane. Um, and, and maybe actually do something like only eight over the course of a year to space things out better. And, and like this, um, things like this month, um, this coming month is Christmas in July. I've got the chubby or I've got the hedgehog pattern coming out and I've got the Christmas in July. Like probably if I planned a little bit better, I could have just done Christmas in July and, and like let myself focus on that and, um, and give like a really good experience around that. Um, but I wasn't thinking. And so I've got, you know, I've got the, um, hedgehog coming out as well. So, um, I think if I am better about that, maybe in the future, like next year, I can, I can be more intentional with how I do things and, and, you know, mitigate that burnout and, um, overextension. So that was kind of a long answer. That was my thought. So thank, thank you, Tammy. Thank you for caring and, uh, and taking, taking care of me, watching out for me. I appreciate that. Um, Heather says, I'm still trying to find affordable blanket yarn here in England so I can make one of your patterns. Um, Heather, I think that, um, I think that Erica's from the UK. She is, she can't find uh, blanket yarn in the colors that she likes, but I think she's found something. Um, and then earlier, earlier we were talking about how three strands of worsted weight works out to um, almost the exact same as um, the burnout blanket. It's not as soft, but the gauge would be correct. So that's that is that. Um, Judy says I'll turn. 70 on Thursday. Congratulations, Judy. We were talking earlier about how birthdays are like levels, you know, it's like leveling up and getting better and being awesome. So I'm kind of on this like, yeah, level 70 kick. So way to go. Yes, a lot of people saying happy birthday, happy birthday. Thank you, Erica. 
see. This is true. Um, let's see. Oh, hi, April. Thanks for hopping in. Um, Erica says, Valerie, I get excited with every animal you make. I am, <laughs> I am, woo -woo, they're all so cute. Thank you, Erica. Let's see. Deborah says, make January the frog. That could be fun. Oh, there's so many, like so many ideas in my head. Sometimes it, it is a little like, whoa, because <laughs> there's so much going on in my head. Um, if you can tell by like the disarrayed order of my whips. Um, Zella says that hedgehog is so stinking cute. Thank you. Deborah has hopped in here. Deborah Cook says, hi, Valerie. I'm super late. So sorry. But on another note, I think your patterns are very, very reasonable. I would not expect less. Well, thank you very much, Deborah. By the way, I kind of love the name Deborah. Just throwing that out there. I, I've noticed that like a lot of people in in kind of my audience or people who talk to me, their names are like Deborah, Deb or Debbie. Excuse me. I've thought about making naming the deer. Having like the full, like the big deer be like Deborah, and then the baby deer be Debbie, and then like the deer lovey be Deb. <laughs> Wouldn't that be so cute? Um, yeah, I, I'm, I love the name. I think it's really cute. All right. Oh, Kim's. Uh, Crafty Corner says, after a couple of times through the washer, worsted gets quite soft, even the cheapest brands. So, yeah, so maybe, let's see who was saying that. I talk too fast and I don't remember the names. Oh, hello, Kay May. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Where was that? I can't seem to find it now. I'm sorry about that. Um... Yeah, so so that could that could potentially be um, a, a way that you could work. Heather is maybe just getting getting three three different things of the worsted weight, washing them quite a few times. I've I've heard people will put them in like little um, bags, like a, like a sock bag or a lingerie bag or something like that, so that it doesn't get too beat up in the wash and it kind of it will stay all together. Um, maybe wash it a couple times, it'll soften up, and then you can make your project. Zella says, I need a frog. <laughs> I I will definitely, I, I just, I want to be like, yes, I'll work on it. But there's so many things I can't, I, I've got to not say that because if I, if I, uh, commit to something I'm not going to have time to do. I'm going to feel really bad. And I don't want to let anyone down. So I can't say I'm going to work on it right now, but I fully intend to someday make a frog. I can promise that. Edney says, can't wait for the hedgehog release. Yes, I'm excited too. I think it's going to be fun. Let's see. Um, Erica says to Heather that she got blanket yarn in the baby colors um, from all the baby yarn. They don't sell it all the time and they do sell out quickly. That's good to know. Let's see. Oh, well, thank you, Zella, so much for hopping on. Oh, geez, I did not realize how close we were to the end of this. We've just been having a lovely chat and I've been very, very chatty. So we've got like probably 54 seconds left in our chat here. Um, thank you all so very much for being here tonight. I appreciate it. Let's see. Zella says she's got to run. Yes, thank you. Thanks for being here. Um, Judy, thank you also for being here. And thank you for your comments on my last live chat. I really appreciated that. Gave me a lot to think about. Um, good night, Amber. Good night, April. Good night, Adele. Thank you for being so supportive. I appreciate that, Adele. Good night, Dakota. I don't think I saw you slide in here. Hi. 
Hugs from South Dakota. Hugs from Springfield, Missouri. Good night. Good night, everyone. Thank you again. Um, we will chat again. I'll announce it in the vlog when we're having our next chat. So thank you for being here. And in the meantime, take care. We'll talk to you soon.